Think you've got what it takes to use a $50 PC for a whole two weeks? I've arrived on the Ides of March, almost, with a prophecy. It's cheap PC challenge time. Let's boot this episode up and get into the challenge details. Alright? Bottoms up. Twenty twenty four marks the third year of the Cheap PC Challenge, and this year I felt like the whole exercise could use some changes to the fundamentals. Some extra spice, expanded opportunities for jank, a greater likelihood of finding diamonds in the rough. I wanted to enable more people's participation in this year's challenge, especially in light of the meteoric rise in the price of PC parts over the last year. At the same time, I wanted to craft a rule set that would encourage more interesting builds all around, no matter from what walks of life participants hail. The biggest change this year is that I've divided the challenge into three categories. The first category is the classic category. This is pretty much identical to previous year's challenges. Build a PC for under $100 and run it through some benchmarks for points. You'll be scored against others in the category and you can see who builds the best cheap PC. But this year, I've added an additional category, the budget category. It's basically the same rule set and challenges, but with the total parts budget reduced from $100 to $50. As you can imagine, if your $50 build goes over $50, it gets bumped into the $100 category. But what happens if your $100 build goes over $100? Well, it gets bumped into the third category in the challenge, the unlimited category. UNLIMITED! This category exists to serve basically two scenarios, either a cheap machine that's more than $100, or that old free computer you have in your closet. The unlimited category can also compete on the benchmarks, but there's a wrinkle to the scoring for this category, which I'll cover in just a minute. So, that's a really quick overview of the challenge. If what you've heard so far has you intrigued, stay tuned, because we're going to go over the details right now. Let's kick things off with something familiar, the classic category. This category is the most similar to previous year challenges. You have a budget of 100 US dollars to spend on your PC's four key components, CPU, GPU, motherboard, and RAM. These components need to be used, not new, and you need to go out and acquire them, with one exception that I'll get to when we talk about the unlimited category. Why used parts? Well, the ulterior motive of the challenge is to get computer parts out of the e-waste pipeline and to use previously discarded components to do interesting things. To show that old computers are more capable than a lot of people assume. The budget is in US dollars because I'm based in the US, but if you're outside the US, you're still very welcome to participate. Just please convert from your local currency at the time you purchase each part. The classic category forms the basis of the other two categories in this year's challenge. The budget category follows the same rules and challenges as the classic category, but you're aiming for $50 in parts instead of $100. The unlimited category addresses issues with the other two categories and shares the same benchmark tests for points. Speaking of the benchmark challenges, you'll need to build a PC that can complete them, so let's talk about what those challenges are. The first two challenges are mandatory for inclusion in the competition. One is a test of CPU performance, and the other is a test of GPU horsepower. This year, the CPU test is Cinebench Release 10 from 2007. The GPU test this year is two particular subtests from 3D Mark 03, which is, you guessed it, from 2003. These two challenges favor older hardware, but they'll run on Windows versions as old as Windows 2000, all the way up to Windows 11. And I don't see any reason why they wouldn't run under Linux, uh, under Wine, or Proton, but that's an exercise left to the viewer. Now, the budget and classic categories also can participate in an optional challenge that I alluded to at the start of the video. If you daily drive your cheap PC, you can score substantial points for your build. Speaking of scoring, let's talk about that now with an example build. Let's say I want to enter into the $100 category, so I hop on eBay and I find and purchase a handful of components. Uh, two sticks of kinda garbage RAM, this overpriced turd of a motherboard, and to top it all off, since we're quickly running out of budget, a two-module bulldozer APU for socket AM4. Shipping costs don't count towards your total, to try and balance out folks who have access to local PC recyclers and scrappers. So altogether, that puts us at right about $98. 
extras like heat sinks, power supplies, cables, adapters, storage, etc. don't count towards the total. So here's the finished machine, and we actually tested this on stream together last week. By the way, I stream almost every Saturday where I do unhinged things with old computers like trying to run Starfield on a bulldozer CPU or overclocking vintage Cyrixes until I pop capacitors on my motherboard. Swing on by if you're interested. So to test this machine, I first ran Cinebench R10 on it, downloadable from the link in the description. Scoring means running both the single core and multi core tests, and then adding the scores together to get the PC's official points for the challenge. For the A10 9700, we've got this score. Next up, I ran 3D Mark 03, also in the description, but just select Game Test 2 and Game Test 3. Uh, by the way, you can unlock 3D Mark from UL's Legacy Benchmarks page, also in the description. Anyway, ProxyCon and Trolls Layer are the two DirectX 8 tests in 3D Mark 03. Let them play out, and once you've done that, uh, you're going to click on the Details button and look at the frame rate for each, the FPS. Add these two together and multiply that resulting number by 25. That's your GPU score. So the A10-9700's iGPU scored a total of this many points in the GPU test. Entering the A10 into the classic category means that I can score a bonus of 1,000 points per day that I use the machine as my daily driver for up to two weeks of use and up to 14,000 points. So, you know, if I tortured myself by daily driving this absolute hardware abomination for the full two weeks, I could add nearly 50% to the system score, which is tempting. To get that bonus, the usage days have to be contiguous, so one after another with no breaks. If the machine blows up on day four, you can try entering it as is and hope for an exploding wrenchy award, or rebudget for the failed component and re-enter the machine. Don't forget to rebenchmark it. Also, you, you don't have to do your day job on this PC for the bonus points to count, but if you, for example, skip a day to watch the Netflix on your smart TV, well, it's bonus over for you there too. In the interest of not making this completely impossible, I am explicitly allowing the use of browse service. If you don't know what browse service is, it's essentially the Chrome browser as a service, which you install and run on another, more modern machine on your local network, and then pup it through a ret uh, retro browser on your retro PC. You can install it on another computer, you can install it on a Raspberry Pi, or in my case, I'm running it inside a dedicated virtual machine on my home lab, just for my retro PC builds to communicate with the outside world. Now, this was just an example build. In reality, I purchased these parts over a year ago, so I'd actually have to enter the machine into the unlimited category. So let's talk about that category now. Previously, I said that the unlimited category was for two scenarios, a build that goes over $100 or an old PC you already own. Let me put on my devil horns here because there are details to work out in both of these scenarios. First, a build that runs over the $100 limit of the classic category automatically lands in the unlimited category. Except if you already own some of the components in the build. Specifically, the parts you already own in the build are more than 25% of the category's budget, you get kicked up to the next category. This applies to budget and classic categories. So, for example, you can supply a CPU that's worth $10 to the $50 budget build, and you'll still have that $50 budget for the remaining three parts. But make that a $20 CPU, and you'll be kicked up to the classic category. Donate a $30 CPU, and you're kicked up to unlimited. A lot of folks have asked me about using parts that they already own in the challenge. I mean, waste not, want not, but only to a degree. The main reason I'm doing this is to prevent people like me, who have PC parts coming out of their ears, from drowning out the budget builders who are legitimately trying to compete in the cheap PC challenge. I know you're already asking, and yes, this basically gives you 25% budget flexibility on the two budget categories, while letting you use components you already have. That's by design. So, how do you value a part you already own? I'm going to be very clear. Look it up on your country's eBay or US eBay. Whichever one is cheaper is the official value. That's just for parts you already own that you want to enter into the challenge. When actually buying parts for the challenge, you're more than welcome to use eBay, but better deals are often found on sites like Facebook Marketplace or Mercari or Craigslist, local recyclers, stuff like that. And for those purchases, the price you paid at the retailer is the score, even if the eBay price is lower. So try not to let that happen. 
One last thing about pricing that folks have asked in the past. What about lots and combos? If you buy a combo of multiple parts for the challenge, you have two options. Either you can include the full price of the combo in your budget, useful for if you bought an Office PC or a CPU motherboard RAM combo, for example, or if you bought a large number of parts that are a lot, but you're only going to use some of them in the challenge, you'll need to value those parts individually using the same method as if you owned them already. But the 25% leeway applies here, so it might not be all bad news. Finally, the other thing that the unlimited category does is it eliminates the 14-day daily driving bonus, since unlimited is where you'd be able to enter your used quad socket Skylake server you bought on eBay, or your secondhand RTX 3090 before you drop it into your gaming rig. There are no bonus points for daily driving unlimited hardware. Get my devil horns off. <laughs> Hopefully it's all not too daunting. Uh, I've whipped up a cheat sheet for you to use for the next seven months, so, and if you have any more questions about particular rules, please ask in the comments below, or tag me on Discord, at TechAmber. That's T-E-C-H-A-M-B-R. I'll leave you with a quick screenshotable cheat sheet of the rules, uh, if you'd like to enter, and all this talking has just made your head spin. I hope to see y'all in the contest this year. The last two years have seen some incredible builds from folks just like you. And as always, if you could please click on the algorithm boosting buttons below, I'd really appreciate it. Cheap PC challenge videos don't get the same kind of circulation that my other videos do for whatever reason, so I have to rely on viewers like you to push this around the website and get the word out. And thank you so much for doing so. And with that, please remember to be kind to yourself and others, and may the PC parts be ever in your favor. Have a great night.